This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Kicking It With The K-Train, where I chat with people who have helped me keep an eye on my vision. Uh, this guy I've known for, man, we've known each other now for about four years, I think. And uh, like, I met him when I moved yeah. here. Wait, to, what year is it right now? <laughs> uh, it's a good question, actually. It's uh, I think it's 2023. <laughs> Uh, I moved to the training center in 2019 and I think we met that summer, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so like when, uh, when I, uh, when I, when I need someone to go do something crazy, especially on a bike, uh, I, I dial up this guy, <laughs> my, uh, my good buddy, <laughs> Alex Livin, Alex, man, welcome to the show. How's it going today? Good, Kyle. Good, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, dude. I uh, I appreciate it. This is gonna be it's gonna be a good time here. Yeah, man. So uh, so let's go ahead and just quickly dive in. Uh, so I moved to the I moved to the Springs in in 2019, um, and, and you had kind of been based here for a little bit. And I I, I think we just met because I shot you and you know I, somehow I heard about you and I shot you an Instagram um, note because I saw that you were a professional triathlete living in Colorado Springs and, and you kind of responded and, you know, cause I was looking for people to just run with and you happen to be a really good runner. But so can you go ahead and kind of give everybody a kind of a sense of who is, uh, who is Alex living and like, what did, what did, what did you kind of do, um, you know, before, before we met? Yeah, man. Great questions. Great questions. Uh, I think it was actually on Strava. You reached out to me and hey, if I it? remember right, I flew somewhere one time and the guy I sat next to knew you somehow and then I, told you about me or something. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look it up. But uh, but I remember it was a very like stars aligned kind of meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it kind of was. It kind of was. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I, uh, I got started in triathlon in uh who like late high school so like 2007 maybe okay um you know ran cross country in high school i swam in high school and i was part of like a junior cycling race team as well so it seemed <laughs> kind of natural to throw all three together yeah and uh, i actually got my start doing xteras um which which were pretty hard to find for a, a kid growing up in iowa you know so i think summer between like my junior and senior year of high school i want to say i put like 250 hours of road trips on the car, you know, just driving out to Colorado like three times and going to like Western South Dakota and drive, you know, just, just anywhere I could find a race. Cause at the time, you know, like mountain biking was just so cool to me. Um, yeah. and you know, the, the trails we had around my house certainly were, were pretty weak sauce compared to <laughs> what I ended up racing on. <laughs> right. But, uh, but I just had a blast, you know, like there wasn't, it wasn't a lot of pressure on it. Right. Cause it's like a trail run and then like a mountain bike. So you couldn't really like compare times and speeds like right. from race to race um, or from like training to racing. It was just like, yeah, go out there, rip it up, you know, camp in a tent, uh, which was great. Cause you know, I didn't really have like a lot of cash to, to get in hotel rooms or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, you're a high, you know, high school and, and college kid at that, at, at that time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I could definitely see the appeal of that. <laughs> Yeah, I remember once we drove out to uh, Spearfish, South Dakota for a race, um, and I'd usually try to like rope somebody in with me who had like nothing to do with racing. Like they would just kind of come and camp and hang out for the weekend. Yeah. And uh, I had a '91 Accord wagon, which uh, yeah, definitely loved that car. It was a great car to have. <laughs> but the, mm -hmm. the AC like went out in it, and you know it's like the middle of the summer, and we're just like roasting in this road trip, just just oh, driving man. around like windows down completely on the interstate. Like we'd be pounding Nalgene bottles for the whole drive and like not pee a single time because we're just sweating it all out you know <laughs> so, oh wow man you know, you know maybe not the best for performance but uh <laughs> but we have have a time, yeah. great memories <laughs> great memories of good times uh, good times so like so you actually so you got your start in triathlon with with Xterra yeah yeah so my first few races yeah like I, I don't think I did like a a road try until I had been doing it for a couple of years, you know, so, cause I grew up in Des Moines and at the time right. the, uh, high V triathlon was like really big. 
Yeah, because I, I was I was I was gonna say because I I thought like you know growing up in growing up in I uh, you know and, and that's just you know that's kind of just mind boggling to me that like you, you're digging and, and getting into you know Xterra off you know off road triathlon when you know in like two thousand six seven eight like high V I mean that was like one of the biggest prize purses in trap in yeah. road triathlon like you know. I mean, that's like, that's crazy. What, what was it that appealed to you about, uh, about the off-road triathlon more than, more than, uh, the, you know, taking to the roads? Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was just a super fun laid back atmosphere. Um, you know, a couple of the people on the, uh, junior cycling team I was on, <laughs> they had kind of gotten into Xterra's and I was like, all right, yeah, like I could do that. You know, I, I think my first mountain bike, um, Oh man, I wish I could remember it now, but it's like a, a, a Trek, like 9,800 or something. I bought it at the, uh, at a used warehouse sale. Right. And nice. I'm sure this thing was like top of the line in like 1989, you know, a carbon oh, tube life. stuck into aluminum, um, uh, couplings, you know, like the, yep. the, the technology wasn't good enough to make the whole thing out of carbon yet. Full XTR, yep. you know, wow. but, uh, yeah, I was, you know, I think I paid like a hundred bucks for it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and yeah, I just go out there and 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 race that thing, and and then you know got a couple upgrades throughout the years, but um, but that's what I got my start on, you know. And it was just it's just such a, and still I think you know if I were to go back and do a try now, I I think it would be an Xterra, you know, just the atmosphere. Totally. It's just so much more laid back. It's so much more fun. And, yeah. Uh, and like I was saying earlier, like you just you're not worried about the stats, right? Like like. Right. Traffic are always so focused on like, you know, getting that PR um, and then getting the PR in every individual distance or a discipline. Yeah. And, and then, you know, what's my power? What's my pace? And and on the mountain bike, it's just like, yeah, do whatever, man. Just try to go fast and and then do a little trail run and have some fun. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. So so you uh, so you graduated from high school and went, and went to college. Did you did you run in college? Like, did you run track cross country in college or like? Did you, uh, were you just like dabbling as, you know, as a, as an athlete? Yeah. You know, I mean, I definitely, uh, maybe my freshman, sophomore year, maybe got a, a, a little too into college, uh, got really good at beer pong and some other things like that. <laughs> um, you know, I, I got that question a lot though, because, you know, running, uh, certainly when I had my professional career was, was my jam. Right. Yeah. So I'd get that quite a bit. People like, oh, yeah, you must have ran at Iowa. And I was like, no, definitely didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, it definitely would have been cool. But I just uh, I just wasn't, you know, focused enough at the time. Right. And, and then um, probably starting like sophomore year, um, had to kind of get my life together <laughs> a little bit because I, I was definitely struggling in college, you know, grade wise and, and otherwise. And and training really kind of gave me that um, focus. Right. I think yeah. I probably have an addic addictive personality to a certain extent. And so it was good to pour that energy into something a little bit more productive. And, yeah. uh, you know, wouldn't you know, it? like, you know, training was going well and then my schooling went better and yeah. it just gave me a way, especially in college to like really structure my days. Right. Cause you yeah. have just so much freedom. Like you kind of go from high school, you know, going to school all day, dealing with your parents to like, Hey, you want to take uh, Tuesday off? you can, you know, no one's yeah. going to come in there and, and check on you or force you. And, um, you might, you might fail that midterm, but, uh, uh yeah, but then once I started can. training, you know, things were going really well. I got involved with the triathlon club locally at school, um, mm -hmm. and just started pouring like a lot, you know, I had the time, right? Like yeah. you know, I, I could rack up 20, 25 hours of training a week. Um, and Iowa City was just a, a really great place to train. You know, there's quite a big uh, road cycling scene. Um, okay. the, the roads in general are amazing, right? There's just a lot of like rolling farm roads, um, yeah. lots of empty rural stuff to kind of bike around on. Uh, they had built, uh, University of Iowa built a brand new, um, amazing like gym facility, right? So we had this oh, like nice. crazy pool. I want to say like the, the Big Ten Swimming Championships um or maybe even the ncaa swim championships were hosted there uh, okay. while, while i was still in school so so it was a great facility you know we had lots of uh awesome trails to like run around on and, and just lots of tracks and stuff available and and so i just you know started doing uh more road stuff as well and yeah with the road you kind of have that direct comparison like oh hey like the pros finished in this time i would have right. been 
you know, right up there, maybe even in the money, you know, yeah. at the time, the uh, Lifetime series was really big. So like yep. it was easy to drive over to Chicago and do Lifetime Chicago. And, and it was just cool to be part of a race with like, you know, 3,000, 4,000 people or however many. Yeah. Um, just that atmosphere, you know? Yeah. So how did you kind of, I, I mean, did you kind of make the shift into, you know, racing prof- like what 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 was your professional arc like because you like you raced you know you you raced as a you know as a as an itu pro for for a few years i, I think that was yeah. you know, either during college or right after college and then you transitioned to, to a 70.3 pro but how, how did what 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 is what was your path to you know breaking into that you know that itu scene and, and racing on the you know racing internationally yeah i mean um <laughs> I'm sure part of it was just trying to put off the realities of, of real life. And, and, sure. and, you know, like a lot of my friends were getting internships and trying to figure out what they want to do for a job. And I was like, mm-hmm. man, I just want to, I just want to keep racing. <laughs> you yeah, know? sure. Uh, yeah. I don't want- <laughs> and so I think, um, I'm trying to think like the first draft legal race I did, you know, I just, I had like a, a crit racing background, you know, growing mm-hmm. up in the Midwest, uh, especially mm-hmm. being on like on a cycling team. Um, we, we just, we would race a lot of crits. Like we didn't really have like the big long road races and kind of like the, the scene out in California. Um, right. we had a lot of, you know, industrial park parking lot crits. And, and yeah. so when, and when I first like heard about ITU, I was immediately intrigued because I was like, oh, that's so cool that you get to have this bike pack dynamic, you know, in the middle of a race. And, um, and it was something that I really wanted to be a part of. And I think, uh, you know, for collegiate nationals as well, for, for club nationals, for triathlon, <laughs> I started having like a draft legal option. So okay. I think I had raced that a couple of times. Um, I unfortunately, like, I think the first year they did it down in uh, Tempe, Arizona, mm-hmm. uh, I flatted out on the bike, which really oh. sucked. I just nailed this uh, little crack in the pavement mid corners. I was just like really driving the bike into the ground and just, yeah. just being maybe too aggressive. And um, so, so that was definitely frustrating. And, and, you know, unfortunately that would maybe be a, a common arc of frustration throughout my whole career. Sure. But, but then, you know, like there are a lot of different avenues to, to getting that pro card. You know, I, I'm not sure what the rules are now, but at the time, right. you know, there was like 10 criteria. And if you hit any one of those 10, you could get your pro card. And then oh, wow. with that card, then you could start racing some ITU races, you know. So so the first ones I think I ever did were the, uh, there's always like a race in like Claremont and Sarasota, kind of back to back weekend is right around spring break. Yep. And, um, yeah, I just started doing that and, and then just started kind of chasing some Conti cups, some world cups, um, got to start, you know, a handful of, uh, WTS races, which was really fun too. And, um, and was just pretty blown away, you know, and, and at first, you know, like, you know, you, you're just so caught up in it, right? Like you, you don't even realize kind of what's going on. But yeah. I, I think I did uh WTS Chicago and, 2014 i think yep. okay. um which which was like a wild course i think we had like something like eight u-turns per lap and we did like eight laps or something holy you cow know, they just, <laughs> yeah like they just had us and all I, squeezing and I, in like and I think, park and i think our te- and i think our courses are technical <laughs> yeah 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 no i mean it was just a, a constant like just snapping of that you know <laughs> rubber band over and over um yeah and, uh, and i think actually i had like a a rock that got like wedged into the bottom of the uh treads on my shoe like early oh, on in that 10k too and i could feel it and i was like ah oh, do i want to get rid of that no it's gonna cost time <laughs> you know <laughs> um but yeah i had a blast there you know i think i was like in i don't know 33rd or something and like fifth american and you know top three guys are going to rio it was the u.s championship right. at the time too so that was maybe the first time that i was like oh dude like you know, maybe I belong here. Maybe I could do this. Cause I was never like a standout athlete as a kid, you know, fine. Right. I, I would make like the varsity team, but I wasn't the freshman making varsity. You, you right. know what I mean? I just, I just kind of knew that I could work really hard and, um, and kind of progress from there, you know, and my parents weren't like athletes or anything. You know, I always had the most like ridiculous chores. Like we'd 
um, ran like a pseudo chop shop in our garage. We oh wow finished our own basement, and I I remember in like eighth grade or seventh grade, and I broke my arm, and we had just started finishing our basement, and I remember breaking my arm and being like, oh awesome, like I'm in a cast, like I don't have to like be downstairs working on the basement anymore with my dad. Like, I don't have to worry about this. Like, this is going to be great. By the time the cast off, the project will be done. And yeah, I want to yeah. say like five years later, senior year of high school, we finished the basement. <laughs> you know, so, so uh, there's just always something to do. And, and, you know, my dad just, you know, like, Oh, you had swim practice this morning at from five to seven. Like, all right. Like, you know, seven 30 to 10 30, like we're, building a deck now or, or, or doing whatever, you know? So it's just, it was always, just always doing stuff. Um, you know, looking back on it, I think the only way I got through that was cause I was like a teenager full of energy, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. But, but I, I think that, you know, I, I, that common theme with, you know, people that wind up being triathletes is that like, you just uh, like, you know, cause I mean, like, I, I just think back on, on my, you know, on my, my arc and it's like you know i i was i was an okay you know I was, I was an okay competitive rock climber i was an okay you know high school wrestler i was a terrible college wrestler uh, but, <laughs> uh you know i i just like you know but then like you know my parents you know everything that we we did was you know you you had to work hard and just give a, a whole hell of a lot of effort um uh, and, and like it you know really sounds like that's kind of that's kind of what happened with with you is just like you had you know you had just these a multitude of of skills and you know i think uh <laughs> uh you know you know we were texting the other day and you're like oh yeah but uh, you know, you know those, those skills obviously have, have helped you you know in in your life today because i think you do a lot of your own you know home remodeling and stuff yeah yeah you know you like kind of look back on it now and you're like all right cool like i can tile a bathroom like i can kind of do this and and certainly like youtube helps a lot and it's it's not like it's not stressful but it it's certainly a lot cheaper than hiring somebody out but but i think in general right like triathletes end up doing triathlon because if they were like so good at any individual sport they probably just would have stuck with that right (laughs) no exactly man yeah no i mean like I, i i tell people all the time i'm like i'm a i'm terrible swimmer i'm a not a great cyclist and I'm really not a great runner, but I'm pretty good at swim, bike, run. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll put them together and man, like you can't stop me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so you rate, you raised ITU for, you know, for a handful of years, you, you know, you kind of had that, that aha moment at, 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 in Chicago about, uh, you know, you, this, Oh, maybe I, my, maybe I belong here. Um, uh, I think I think you went on to race ITU for a couple more years, and then, like, when did you uh, when did you kind of make that shift toward um, seventy point three, like the the, the half Ironman um, distance racing? Yeah, I uh, I basically raced through the uh, IT. I raced ITU through the Rio Olympics. Um, yep. I ended up getting uh, really sick. I had this like Campylobacter infection in my gut. Um, mm-hmm. and it kind of ended up chewing up the valve between my large and small intestine. So Ooh. I had to get like a colonoscopy to get all that like cleaned up. Um, you know, cause yeah, a lot of people I think think like, oh yeah, like you're like a full-time athlete. You're just this pillar of health. And it's like, man, you are just, you're just hanging on by a string. You know, your immune system's constantly suppressed. Your yeah. body's constantly beat up and run down. And so, um, you know, I was having like a lot of like bloody diarrhea and that was, you know, 2015 maybe so the the points chase was on for Rio and I just wasn't able to train well I was just constantly feeling beat up so so that was a bummer I mean that's that's racing that's kind of the way it goes um and then after that you know I just uh I, I started looking around and I was like you know at that time I was what like 20 26 or something and I was like okay yeah. like am I really going to go for another point cycle? My swim is probably just never really quite good enough for ITU. Like I was, it was a great right. pool swimmer and just really struggled to translate it into uh, open water. Right. Um, because I, I definitely had the run, I think to be competitive at ITU. I just, uh, I was just always starting, you know, a minute or two down on the leaders and, and you're not going to run a minute or two into those guys, you know, <laughs> like it's yeah. just, it's just kinda, yeah. Yeah. Kind of, kind of hard. You can, I mean, like, I mean, well, and, and that, like, you know, back then the top guys were 
they were running what third, you know, 30 minute 10 K off the bikes, you know, maybe a handful of guys were running that 29 minute, but I mean, even, even yeah, still, yeah. Whew, that's, that's hard. Yeah, exactly. So, so e- even like, uh, you know, even with like a one or two minute gap, like you're not catching the, the slow guys out of the lead pack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just so tight at the top. Yeah. Um, for me, like, you know, like rewind back to, you know, high school, college. And I, and I feel like a lot of what I was good at is I just, uh, I wouldn't fatigue as much as other people, right? Like right. you get off the bike and you're like, Oh, I could totally catch these people because they're going to blow up. Right. But, but you know, you step up to that pro level and it's, uh, it's so, so impressive how fast all these guys are, how aggressive everybody is. Oh yeah. Um, it, it just, it just blows you away, you know, and, and I'm sure you've seen it in your own races, right? Like oh, yeah. everyone is just so ready at every oh, yeah. race. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I decided to kind of start dabbling into 70.3, uh, cause at that time too, you know, you're trying to figure everything out, how you're going to make it work financially, you know, right. cause ITU is like, uh, you know, if you're not making, um, I don't remember what it was now, like maybe top five at a Conti cup, top 10 or 20 at a world cup, you know, you're going home completely empty handed and, right. and you had to fly to, I don't know, Turkey or something. Right. Yeah. So like. Like, and the, the stress of just being like, all right, like I better do well because I got to pay for this ticket. I got to pay rent this month. Yeah. Um, and so 70.3, you know, that just, I think that's kind of like a natural progression of things, right? Like a lot of the ICU sure. guys would, you know, once, once you lose maybe some of that raw speed, that's kind of where you tend to go, right. but also there's a lot more race options and, and maybe, you know, not quite so far away or, or having to pay so much to get there. Right. Um, and then uh, the, the coach I had in, um, you know, late high school, college, um, he always told me, like, Alex, you got to race 70.3. Like, you would be phenomenal at it because I was mostly like a, a bike runner, you know? Right, right. Um, and so the the first race I did and, and the, the first time I got, like, a decent result. I think the first 70.3 I did was in Cabo, which is a pretty tough course, like a lot of climbing, yeah. you know, hot. And, um, and you know, naturally I like swam off course. Like we, I was kind of like leading the second pack in the water and, and I, I don't know what I saw, but I saw something, I saw some splashing and, and like, we like cut a buoy on accident. Like, and I started, Oops. you know, instead of like swimming the full square, I kind of cut the last corner of the square. And so this jet ski chased us down and, uh, and like made us go back and swim around, you know? So we lost like five or seven minutes and I just, Ooh. I don't know, you know, it's just, uh, again, I feel like my, a lot of my career was just all these <laughs> constant, like just random mistakes and, yeah. and frustrations <laughs> like that, you know? Uh, um, yeah. so, so yeah, I mean, I, I ended up like, you know, I think I was on like a borrowed TT bike at the time cause I didn't even own a TT bike. Right. Um, and, uh, and then ended up having like a pretty decent run, you know? So that, that's when I was like, Oh, I, I think I could actually do this. You know, I, I, I don't even think I cracked the top 10 at that race, you know, just, right. just because of all the mistakes I made. Yeah. But, but then, you know, next year, like, all right, I'll buy my own TT bike. Let me focus on this. Let's get it going. And, and then, you know, yeah, you start kind of placing in the money and you're like, all right, yeah, I think I can hit this. I think I can make this happen. And, um, and it was nice to kind of have that run weapon. You know, not yeah. to say that the half Ironman guys would like fatigue and slow down, but you know, not a lot of guys are running like a, a 110, 112 half off the bike. So to be able yeah. to do that and put maybe five minutes into somebody, you're like, oh, okay, like let's let's make it happen. Maybe I should have been doing this the whole time. <laughs> <You> <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, it's it, it's it's crazy. Like, you know, you know, if if I remember correct, like you were one of the you were one of the first guys that was really consistently running that that 110 111 112 off the bike no matter the no matter the course and now now you got a handful now you got a, a few guys that are consistently running running that but but i mean yeah i mean that that was i mean that that run yeah. was a definitely a weapon for yeah sure. yeah you know i think you know i credit a lot of that to to kind of being here in, in colorado springs um you know i would call it kind of like the the land of resistance with some of my training yeah. partners here you know it's always windy there's just hills galore everywhere you go. Oh yeah. Much all my runs were done on the, uh, the gravel paths around yep. uh, Colorado college, you know, like where we run yep. together. Oh yeah. Um, and, and so, and so all that just kind of eats away at you and, and really helps you work on that, uh, muscular endurance, you know, get yeah. that strength endurance in there. And, and that's what, 
running off the bike and a 70.3 is all about, you know, yeah. just, just having that, um, strength to kind of keep pushing and, and keep it going. Yeah. So what, uh, remind me, when did you make the move to, to Colorado Springs and why did you decide to, you know, to make Colorado Springs your, your home instead of, you know, staying in Iowa or, you know, settling somewhere else? Yeah. Um, so we moved out here in 2012, 2013, okay. uh, uh, I made the move with my, uh, then college girlfriend, Kelly, now wife, um, yep. And I had always wanted to come to Colorado since uh, my family took like a summer trip out here when I was in second grade. And I first yeah. like realized that like mountains are a thing, you, you know, like I guess, as a kid, <laughs> yeah. you know, like you just, you're used to what you're used to. And then all of a sudden you're yeah. like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so it was a place that I always wanted to be, always wanted to live. Um, I mean, I mean, certainly I think the the Mecca of triathlon was in Boulder, but you know, I maybe wanted to, to try to like, get more into the OTC because I was racing ITU at the time. Sure. Um, you know, maybe had I gone to Boulder, I would have jumped onto 70.3 a little sooner and saved myself some trouble. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, but we're not about making smart decisions, you know, <laughs> no. uh, make a smart decision when you can make it, when you can take the hard road. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, 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 you know, I just, I, I liked the town quite a bit, you know, the, originally when I moved out here, I was like, oh man, I'm going to be riding all these like crazy mountain roads. And, and I think that's true in Boulder. Um, but here, you know, maybe less so, but I think the, the trails here are just amazing. Like that's what I really fell in love with. And, you know, like, yeah. I would do most of my run training would be on like mountain trails. Um, yeah. you know, find my cycling is like kind of through like rich neighborhoods in the Hills, you know, <laughs> like I feel like yeah. in Boulder, you know, you're, taking that uh long road out to Estes park or something and, and we don't yeah. really have something like that here but um but i was fine you know I, I made it work yeah no i mean i mean you you've you've taken me on uh on a few of the the rides that, that you used to do it you know hey i mean yeah it it's it's some twisty windy stuff through some through some neighborhoods with some uh some pretty yeah. expensive houses <laughs> but uh but man we uh we have, we have fun doing it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you're sitting in the granny, you're either like sitting in the granny year or uh, yeah, full tuck coming down the other side. You pretty, know? pretty, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, man. So, so like, you know, so we, we met, uh, you know, 2019 and, and really I, I was just looking for someone to, to run with outside and, you know, and you were, I think you were kind of winding down your, your 70.3 career at that time. So like, what was the, you know, why, why did you kind of decide that eh, maybe it's time to wind it down and, you know, hang it up and, and, you know, figure out what, uh, what you want, what I want to do with the rest of my life. Uh, what was, what was that process? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I think there's very few people who, who are racing triathlon full time that are going to be able to just kind of retire on, on what they did in the sport right? Whether yeah. it's because they earned enough money during that time, or um, they are, are able to build enough of a following that they can kind of just roll with that, you know, start their own coaching company or, yeah. um, you know, be in some kind of like influencer or, or whatever. Um, yeah. And I, I, I wasn't really one of those people like Instagram, Facebook was always like so foreign to me. Like I, I really never felt natural, like having to post things and, and try right. to get sponsored kind of build a following. Um, you know, I just wanted to like just train and race and like kind of yeah. put on the blinders and, and do nothing else. Yeah. Um, and then for me, you know, I mean, I think in 2018, um, you know, I was 28 at the time it was maybe like my most successful stable year ever, but mm -hmm. you know, it was still just like, just these mistakes or, or just like kind of constant little, uh, troubles that I would run into, you know, I think the biggest thing for me was, uh, I did a race in China mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I don't remember if, like the, I think the majority of us ended up kind of being in this like one big pack, um, you know, dead flat road, super straight, uh, for the bike. And we just kind of had this one pack. And I remember, um, uh, going into transition, then there was this little snaking, you know, maybe like a mile, like really narrow bike path to get back mm -hmm. down to the, the whatever you want to call it puddle that we swam in, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and right as we were going into there, uh, I had like a TV, like race moto kind of pivot around in front of me. And as they like 
pulled out from in front of me, there was this, this huge pothole that I saw like at the last second. So I just like slam in this thing at like, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour and Ooh. double flat, like boom, boom. Oh. Like, Man, are you like, and, and so, you know, like it, I maybe would have been okay if it just would have been a dead straight ride into transition, but it was just this yeah. really narrow, like, like a little walking path, you know? Yeah. And, and everyone's just blowing by me as I'm like two wheel drifting, trying to hold my bike together. And, uh, and so then starting the run, you know, I probably lost two, three minutes, four minutes to those guys right there. Yeah. And, and, and you know, just the mental reset you have to do. Like I, I went from like, Oh man, like, I think I'm going to win this race. Like I, I'm about to run these guys in the ground. This is going to be awesome to like, I'm almost like a not again feeling, you know, like, like why yeah. do the on God's not smile upon me. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right. Um, and I remember just, yeah, like crossing the finish line there and just being like, dude, like, what are you, you know, like, is, is this what you want to be doing? Do you want to keep pursuing this? You know, cause, cause yeah. you know, at some point you're going to have to stop, right? Like, you know, yeah. you're going to have to start finding something else. I'm going to have to get some kind of job. I've never had a professional job before, you know, right. going to hire a, you know, 30 year old with like zero life you know experience outside of racing right. right so it was something that i was always um maybe just like constantly concerned about right sure. because you don't you know, stop at some point and and especially you know it's, it's one thing when you're like 23 24 to just kind of be racing and having a good time but then like you get closer to 30 and you know you start to kind of think about things a little more and yeah. um and the pressure of that maybe just really got to me you know and and, and so you know, I don't really ever remember a moment where I like sat down and I was like, all right, like, I think I'm done. It was more just kind of like just a gentle push away and, and, and just gently kind of like letting go of the sport, you know, and, right. um, which, which, yeah, it was, certainly was like tough to do, especially, you know, so I spent most of 2019, like looking for a job and trying to like work any connections I had and, yeah. and, and trying to, um, uh, anything really, you know, and, and it was tough. Like that was really stressful too, because things weren't really panning out, you know, like, uh, no. and, and it took some time, you know, it definitely took some time. Absolutely. And, you know, you know, and I think, um, you know, so like, like, what did you, like, what did you kind of land in? Like, I know, uh, like, I mean, I know, I know you're, you're now in the, I don't really know, like your like medical device or operating room, like, yeah. Yeah, kind of like, how, how did you kind of find your way into that? And why did you decide to kind of get into like, kind of tell people what, what you do now? Cause you were just starting that when, when we met. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I went from like one crazy niche world to another, you know? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I swam part of this, uh, master's group here in town and yep. uh you know the, i would always kind of like hang out in the hot tub for a while afterwards and one of the other guys there um he was uh also do, he was doing medical device sales and you know i heard him talk about his job from time to time over the years and mm -hmm. started picking his brain about it more and more you know i majored in human physiology in college so mm -hmm. i kind of wanted to do something that used my degree at least a little bit um or at least I could like leverage my degree into, into helping me get a job in the first place. Sure. And, um, and talking to him about the industry, I was like, all right, like, yeah, that sounds kind of interesting, kind of cool. Like, you know, after doing triathlon for so long, there's no way I was going to get some office job, like work nine to five, you know, like yeah. I, I can't do my life. Like I need this, uh, bit of, uh, chaos and, and sporadicness <laughs> in my life. A little bit, a little um, bit. Yeah. Yeah. Although now after like doing the job for a few years, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Nine to five doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, you know? Um, and so, you know, he gave me some contacts and it was just, just, yeah, constantly calling people, trying to set up meetings, trying to get into yep. things. So yeah. So now I'm doing, um, medical device sales for a distributorship. We sell, uh, Arthrex products. So if you, uh, tear your ACL or, you know, your rotator cuff, break an ankle, someone has to bring in the, the screws, the plates, uh, the anchors that are going to reattach your ligaments mm -hmm. back to bone. Um, yep. and so I'm that guy, right? So I, I'm bringing in that product. I'm kind of talking the doc through those techniques, um, you know, how to do things the right way, how to get, you know, the best outcome possible for the patient, you know, what angles to yeah. drill at, uh, 
Um, and, and really when the job I think gets a lot of fun is when, you know, it's, it's, it's surgery, it's real life. Things aren't always as easy as they are in the textbook or as clear cut. Yeah. So it's maybe a patient with bad bone, um, or, or maybe a particularly bad injury, or maybe it's like their third ACL in two years. So you're really having Ooh. to come up with ideas on like, Hey, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to make sure that we can get the best possible outcome for the patient? Um, and, and so those are the parts that, that I really like, you know, like where you're really kind of getting to do some problem solving. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. but a big part of the job basically is that you're just, Oh, hold on. My computer's almost done. <laughs> All good. Yeah. The, <laughs> I thought I plugged it in, but the plug wasn't in the outlet. <laughs> All so, good. All good. Uh, no worries. But for the most part, you know, like you've got, you've got the surgeon kind of taking care of the patient. And then there's a, a, a scrub tech who's kind of handing instruments to the surgeon and preparing the implants and things like that. And so you're mm -hmm. basically just trying to keep that scrub tech one step ahead of the surgeon so that the whole surgery can flow as you know smoothly and efficiently as possible. Right. Um, so, and it, you know, it's a, it, it's kind of a wild job, you know, like there, there's some days maybe I'm out for 10, 12, 14 hours and then yeah. and some days like a few hours to kind of set some things up and, and everything in between. So it's, it's not always what's on the schedule is what's going to happen. And, and a lot of times sure. too, it's again, it's surgery. So a lot of it might just be like, hurry up and wait. Like, you know, like yeah. oh, this thing was scheduled at two o'clock. I better get over to that hospital. And then you get there and you're like, Oh, we're not starting until four or five. Awesome. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that kind of prepared you perfectly for this, for this career. I mean, yeah, to, yeah, I mean, to, you know, to be honest, you got to be on your toes. <laughs> yeah, Always. absolutely. But, uh, it, it's funny, like uh, my uh, my my team leader, you know, after like working with me for a while, he was like, because uh, he, he was really big into hockey, um, you know, like he played hockey in college and, and okay. all that. And so like for for him then, you know, now dealing with like some some skinny triathlete runner guy. Um, but, but after working with me for like a year or so, he was like, you know what, I think from now on, like we should only hire endurance athletes because, you know, we can just, we can just kind of grind it out. We just keep it going. Um, you know, and just being able to maintain that. And, and I think, you know, I mean, maybe throughout my triathlon career, maybe I was a little bit too worried about what I was going to do, uh, sure. post race, but you know, I, I think at the end of the day, it's like, if you're, if you're willing to work, you, you're not, you're not lazy. You can kind of bet on yourself and, yeah. uh, and you can kind of maintain that positive attitude, you know, things will generally work out. For sure, man. For sure. I love that. So we're going to you know switch gears just a little bit because you and I have had some fun adventures, a um, couple, a couple of fun little adventures over the last uh, couple of years. So back in, back in 2020, um, we all know that the pandemic kind of slammed, um, slammed the world to a halt. And, uh, you know, I, you know, it was, you know, I, I think you were, you were working a little bit, but not really a whole, a whole lot because of you know, the, the ORs were kind of shut down and, you know, I was, I was locked in, uh, I was locked in the training center for, for a good little bit, but, uh, but they let us out to do this, uh, to do this little bike race across, you know, bike ride for fundraising from Utah to, to Kansas. And, uh, and, you know, and, and I, I was like, well, I know this dude, uh, Alex who uh, can jump on the front <laughs> of my bike. Yeah. We've never ridden there. We've only, we had only ever run together at that point, but, uh, like kind of talk. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. We hadn't even ridden the bike. That was like, the, that was why we started riding the bike together. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And like, yeah. and now like we, like now we barely run together. Like it's like, it's <laughs> yeah. like, we're, we're always riding together now. Uh, but yeah, like, why don't you, uh, kind of tell people a little bit about, like, just kind of the experience of, of Colorado over COVID is, is what we called it. And your, uh, your, your first, uh, fun experiences, uh, on, on the front of the tandem. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, just, just even riding the tandem, like around town, just trying to get ready for that. Right. Um, yeah, we, we did, how many of us were there, right. There's maybe like six of us riders that we would just kind of, <laughs> be in in teams of two i guess seven including myself right but we yep. would all just be in two kind of handing off to each other uh, across yep. the entire state um but it was awesome i mean i i thought the first time we got on the tandem i mean that thing is just such a machine right like uh, oh yeah 
you know, especially with those like wide tires on and it's uh, it's actually a lot like riding a e-bike for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of having you crank the pedals extra hard and, and yep, uh, yep. You know, with those wide tires, um, I mean, that thing can like really rip on the descents. Um, oh yeah. And so, and so, yeah, that was an awesome time, man. And we just loaded up the RV and, and headed West. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what was our, our first shift like started at like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. It was like, like 10, 10 or 11. Or something, right? Yeah. It was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night on a, on a, Friday, I think you had like gotten off of work at, at like four o'clock that afternoon or something like that. And like, yeah, you, after uh, like you, getting to the hospital at like six 30 in the morning or something. And I was just like, yeah. so, you know, like, but I remember in my mind, I thought like, oh, okay, this will work. Like, I'll just take a quick power nap on the way out, like in the yeah. RV and, uh, and then we'll hit it. But you know, you just, you start getting excited about the race or, you know, the, the relay or whatever you want to call yeah, it, whatever okay. you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, I mean, we just started cranking it. I think we lost uh, both of our water bottles pretty much immediately on the first ascent. Yeah, that was <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was nuts because uh, uh, our first stint was just, uh, well, it was like outside of Montrose on the way into Gunnison and we're kind of dropping yep. that can. And um, I mean, going downhill on that tandem is just, you know, cause there's both of our weights on there. Right. So yep. it's that thing is just going so fast and just kind of plummeting into the darkness of the Canyon. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, that was really cool. That was definitely a, a really awesome experience. And then, and then, man, I have never realized how loud RVs are when you're like riding in them, you know, that, that trip back from uh, the Kansas border, I was just, you know, oh, you're so yeah. tired sleep in the back and just everything is rattling and like yep. crackling it's just like man, yep. what is going on <laughs> oh yeah man no it's it's uh oh man yeah no the, those things get so loud and you know i i was lucky that i had done i had done ram and you know and you know being an rv you know doing the rv you know thing in, in 2018 so i kind of had a you know had a little bit of a advantage over over the rest of you guys so i was able to like cat nap between between uh between shifts but but no nah, man that was that was so much fun uh but the, the thing that stands out to me uh most about that uh that particular ride uh you know you and i were uh we uh we got we got picked to do this nice long downhill section on uh was it was it highway 24 coming down from woodland park oh, yeah yeah drop it into town yeah drop it into <laughs> town and and we uh we we stalk it on Strava and we're like, hey, the KOM for this downhill is only fifty six miles an hour. Oh, uh, <laughs> if we we can like that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's a road like I you know I've ridden it a handful of times. You know, anytime I go to climb Pikes Peak, um, yeah. I'm coming down the road at the end. Uh, I mean, so it's not something I'm doing regularly, but maybe I, I would hit it a few times a year. Yeah, um, and it's like perfect, uh, you know, I don't know what it is, like maybe minus 8% or something like that. Uh, so it's really great for keeping your speed up. All the corners yep. are like really smooth and bankable. Yep. And, uh, and the speed limit coming down is like 50 miles an hour. So you can kind of catch the draft of the cars as yep. you're kind of hugging the shoulder. But, uh, you know, what I, what I didn't think about, you know, my, my tandem experience was lacking, you know, I know this now, but like yep. you know, trying to hold like a, 110 or 120 cadence on a tandem is is maybe not the best idea because our chain just exploded right off it, it was the chain to two of us right not the chain to, yep. the, to the rear wheel yeah correct yeah, it was like the, it was the chain, chain between yep it was the timing chain that uh it just snapped right into uh, yeah uh, and and i mean i think like in in hindsight i think we're both pretty pretty lucky that we didn't end up uh, on the pavement and under somebody's tires <laughs> like kind of crashing well, right there <laughs> But, but yeah, I mean, that was such a letdown, you know, we, we were so G'd up to just smash that downhill. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, okay, I guess we're just going to coast. <laughs> well, the funny thing was that like, you know, we're, we're, we're ripping down timing chain snaps. Uh, our mechanic finds the timing chain in the middle of the road, brings it back to us, puts it back together. And we and we still try to go for it, and we're just sending it, and then the chain breaks again. <laughs> and yeah. somehow, yeah, you somehow, know, maybe we should uh, work on learning our lesson, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, and the and like and so it was kind of then that I was like, all right, 
I have we Alex and I have now broken the timing chain twice. Um, uh, and we're still upright. We haven't touched. We haven't touched pavement. So like, I just have like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know you know th- things are gonna be all right things are gonna be all right you know? exactly so um yeah. and so i had no hesitation whatsoever when uh you know you know in 2020 uh, last year in 2022 um dialed you up and and was like yo i've never ridden gravel before but what do you say we take uh take the bike take the bike on some uh on some gravel out in steamboat <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was actually like really awesome. I mean that, you know, I mean, you think that bike does well on like flat roads. I mean, I think that tandems are just the way to ride gravel, you know, like, uh, we just had so much power and, uh, um, you know, in hindsight, I wish we would have started at the front and just like raced it the whole time because, uh, if we got there like a little late and we started at the back of, I don't know if it had to be like over a thousand people ahead of us. Easily, easily. And we we're just constantly blowing by people and uh especially like late on uh or like midway through uh once the groups all kind of spread out i always i just thought it was so funny seeing like everyone try to grab onto our wheel and just yep. catch a draft off of us for just a little yep. bit but, but man yeah that thing was amazing and and even just kind of like surfing through some of the corners um yeah, that's definitely one I think we should uh, we should we should go back for and, and take another. Crack I think at so. It, you know? We we definitely have to because like well and like and we were kind of just having fun like like we weren't racing it we were just kind of like ah we're gonna load up on some uh, we're gonna fill our pockets with some snacks here and there and oh yeah and we yeah. and we near broke you know I mean we still almost held twenty miles an hour for the whole for the whole thing, you know, over, over 60, you know, about 60 miles, hundred K or something like that, you know? Yeah, whole, and I think like, you know, 90 plus percent of it was all on gravel, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and hitting some of those rumbles. Yeah. You still have those water bottles, you know, the, the water bottles they were handing out were really cool. So we pulled up to one of the aid stations and I, I feel like I told you like, Kyle, slam your bottle and get a new one. Cause these water bottles yeah. are pretty dumb. <laughs> yeah. That, I'll still use them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Them. That's right. <laughs> it's awesome man uh, so oh, yeah and just what man. a cool area you know like really cool terrain you're kind of on this like uh you know northern colorado steamboat you're like on this like uh, warped plateau yep. so i don't really re- remember hitting any particular like the long huge climbs but you're just kind nope. of constantly on like these like pretty pretty big rollers maybe a couple yeah. of steep things but um and then just trying to rail some of those corners coming down man that was uh yeah oh, that was, was a lot fun. of fun Oh, that was so definitely. much fun. And just even riding around town, you know, like you were saying, just, just hitting some of these steep roads around town, yeah. um, that tandem, you know, you just, uh, you just stick in the corners. Oh yeah. No, it's so much fun, dude. And like, I mean, we, we have made, we've made some fun memories on, uh, on the bike. I have a feeling we're going to make a few more, uh, but yeah, man. So like kind of, what are you, what are you doing? these days besides you know i know work takes up kind of a lot of your a lot of your time but uh you know you still you know yeah it's work at home improvement projects for me you know um yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) so what's going on in your life these days yeah i i have uh i think in the years like last year year before uh, i started getting more into like mountain bike endurance events like 12 hour 24 hour races um you know i find myself personally like for the most part, the majority of my exercise is coming from mountain biking. You yep. know, we just, we have just such amazing trails around here. Um, and I just find myself having a lot more fun on the mountain bike compared to like the road bike, like not to worry yeah. about cars, and to stress out about how much lower my FTP is now than it used to be, <laughs> you know, um, yep. and, and more of like the, the technical challenge, right? Like instead of how fast can I climb this hill? It's more like, Oh, can I, get up this rock or, or can I hit that drop or something like that? Yeah. You know, um, you know, I haven't really signed up for any races, uh, this year. I think actually I'm going to be doing, a uh, bike tour through the French Alps in August. Oh, so, so that should be cool. You know, and I find like, I need things like there, there was like, yeah, I'll just kind of like crew, like cruise around or something you know i i'm much right. more into like cruising around I am. 
and to like turning myself unless I have a reason to kind of do that, you know? Right. For sure. Um, that, and then just chasing like random, uh, Strava segments, you know, there's, uh, there's a segment that I really wanted last year. Um, you know, for anyone out of Colorado Springs, maybe this doesn't mean a lot, but you know, there's this, uh, bar trail. It's kind of the, the trail that goes all the way to the top of Pikes peak. Yep. Uh, so you, I ride my mountain bike basically halfway up that and drop off and, and kind of come down through uh Cheyenne Canyon. You know, it's like a, I don't know, 30, 35 mile loop with like yep. 4,500 feet of climbing or something stupid, you know, and, um, there was a, a Strava segment for the majority of the, and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to really chase that. I'm going to like work to get that. And nice. Nice. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh, you know, I, I got to go for the obscure segment. I can't go for the ones that good people actually do. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just living life, you know, just, just a lot more relaxed than I was when I was racing, you know, like, uh, like, you know, especially now, like in the winter, like uh, I'm skiing pretty often on the weekends. Yep. Uh, the most I can there. Yep. Uh, I really did a lot of while I was training full time, you know, both, both I was going to get hurt and, not really being able to afford the uh, season pass or something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Oh, dude. I mean, honestly, I could, we could, we could talk for forever on, you know, training, yeah. racing, just mountain biking. We could, we could lay, we could lay plans for, uh, for doing more gravel, you know, gravel racing and all that. But, oh man, like I gotta, I know, well, so I know you got to get endurance run, right. Don't you have like a, a loop that you want to do out in like uh, Buena Vista? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's on the, uh, that's on the bucket list as well. So no, yeah. No one's 14 is definitely on the, on the yeah, bucket yeah, yeah. bucket list as well. So that, that'll be uh that'll be a post Paris project. Um, so yeah, <laughs> be, be ready to uh, be doing lots of trail running and, you know, lots of endurance stuff with me uh, coming yeah, up so here. I need like a year or so to get my uh, run back up to snuff. You know, <laughs> ah, that's all right. I have I have confidence in you, man. I have confidence in you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, dude, thanks, thanks, seriously, man, so much for for coming on and and, and chatting. It's always great to catch up with you. And uh, man, I, I like I like learning a, a few new new things about you. And uh, yeah, we didn't even uh, we didn't even touch on the fact that you're also bilingual and. Yeah, you, you're you, you got quite yeah. the uh, you, you got quite the uh, quite the history, man. It's it's pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. International man of mystery over here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, bro. That's all right, but but dude, uh, go finish up uh, your bathroom remodel or whatever the heck you're doing, and uh, let's yeah. uh, let's plan to get out on the you know once. Uh, once my shoulder is uh, cleared to start riding outside, uh, we'll have to have to make make some plans. So yeah, man, looking forward to it. Awesome, bro. Well, everyone, I I think you can uh, tell Alex and I we we like adventuring. I, I think you can see why I, I I enjoy hanging out with this guy for long three four hour rides on the on the tandem, and you know we just have a good, we just have a good old time together and. Uh, yeah, I mean, Alex has definitely helped me keep an eye on my vision, and you know, is 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 one of the guys that I can I can really credit with helping me get to where I am now because you know he's he's willing to push the envelope with me and you know take some chances that you know sometimes others others aren't willing to take. So it's uh, it's been pretty awesome having him as a buddy uh, the last the last few years and. We got, we got lots more adventures to do together. So, uh, Alex, thanks a million, bro. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Kyle. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Everyone has been kicking it with the K train and as always keep an eye on your vision. <laughs>